Hey yo, this is Kat from Kentucky Reptile Zoo and today this video is going to show you some black mamba extractions. Oh, hold on just a second please. Mambas and West African green mambas today. You guys can step closer if you'd like to be able to right? see. Like you can step right, you can step like right up to the glass. Um, that glass. way you can see what no. he's doing. <laughs> As you can see, the public were able to watch this extraction. So I'll let us listen to what Brock had to tell them all about it. So he's going to be putting these in a tube on the ground. Because these are long snakes, they're quick. So you don't want to just try to pin them or they're going to move out of the way really quickly. So he's going to run them in this clear tube. Uh, and he has a board on top of it to make it look like a dark hole. And the snake's not going to cooperate right away because the snake's going to do what the snake's going to do. Um, but he's slowly going to coax it in there. And then he'll carefully grab it, the tube and the snake bring it up to the mat on the table, and uh, he'll go ahead and pin the head of the snake. If you couldn't tell, running a mamba in a tube takes a lot of patience. And Jim has to stay calm the entire time and make sure that the snake stays calm too as best as he can. So black mambas typically get, you know, there's a Media likes to say that they're the most dangerous snake or deadliest snake or most aggressive snake. None of those are true. Uh, so you can't really quantify dangerousness. It's not a not something you can measure. Um, black mamas do not kill the most people by far. Uh, all, not even in their native range. Um, they're not the most venomous based on toxicity tests that we can perform. Uh, we don't know what the most venomous snake to a person is because we can't test on people. But we test on mice and when compared to a mouse they don't rank the highest um they are they do get large you know they can get up to like 12 14 feet long um so they are the second longest venomous snake they are quick they can move up to seven miles per hour some places will say uh 12 but that's because they don't realize that they convert to kilometers <laughs> and um so they're fast they have a really strong neurotoxin and that's both presynaptic and postsynaptic. So your nerves have a little gap in between them. That's called a synapse. And one of the, the neurotoxins will cause the release of a lot of acetylcholine into that synapse. So that's a presynaptic um, neurotoxin. But then once that neurotoxin, uh, that acetylcholine has to bind to a receptor. And then what it'll do is it'll prevent it from uh, being released from that receptor. So you get a lot of acetylcholine, which is pretty much like send signals, send a lot of signals. And then you get it to, that signal just keeps binding. And that's what's called a fasciculin. And if you're familiar with fasciculations, which is pretty much just uncontrolled muscle spasms, that's what these guys will, will do. So you have that signal being constantly um, hitting those receptors and those receptors not being able to unbind from it. And so you, you just end up but notice how the snake like yes it is coming back up at him he has been annoying the snake for a little bit now the snake that wants nothing to do with us uh that's another like black mambas when they're cornered they are more likely to bite they're big they're nervous they're fast but you know you can see it's not coming and trying to attack him he's also a tall figure black mambas do like to climb so he's kind of like a tree If anybody has any questions, feel free to ask. As long as they're reptile related, I can't really help with life advice. <laughs> I clean snake poop professionally. That's really all you got to know. <laughs> yeah, so these, although they're called black mambas, they're typically not black in color. They're usually a brown, olive, green, gray coloration. But typically the inside of their mouth is going to be black. Okay, so there he got the, the snake thrown into the tube the other way because he realized which direction the snake wanted to move. And now he's going to go ahead and he's going to pin the head of the snake. There's some coban wrapped around that hook to provide cushion. That's also why we use the mat on the table. And then he's going to let it bite onto that funnel. And that funnel has a little bit of parafilm on top. 
Alapids, which uh, mambas are Alapids. The Alapid is just a family of snakes. Uh, there's also cobras and mambas and pythons in that family, or cobras and pythons and sea snakes. Um, but they have short fixed fangs, so they're not very long like a rattlesnake. And so to give them something to bite into, we use that parafilm. And this part here actually coming up is the most dangerous part, is the release. It's the point where his hand is closest to the snake, and he has no control over it. So the snake can do what the snake's going to do. Um, you know, at every other point throughout this, he has a tool in his hand. He has the snake pinned, or he's, he's got it restrained in some way. But for a split second, when he goes to release the snake, his hand is right next to it, and he has no control over it. But then you can see the snake goes right in there. He gets away, because it wants nothing to do with this. Now that you get the gist of what it is like to tube a mamba, I'm going to speed this one up to get to the extraction part. It is interesting though, watching it in fast motion kind of lets you see how their body moves and it, it's kind of elegant. It's like living cursive. Living cursive that won't go in a tube. Okay, back to Brock now. Good, and right now is the time to not move. He'll pin the head of it. It's going to give it a little bit more slack that way you can't pull back into the tube. And you also don't want to give them any leverage point. So he's going to go ahead and pin it, grab the head. He's going to take it up to that funnel, and on that funnel has some parafilm. Alapids, uh, cobras, mambas, taipan, sea snakes are all alapids. They have short, fixed fangs. They're not long, and they don't fold like rattlesnakes do. So we use a membrane for them to bite into. And when that snake bites, it will start to release venom. And he can feel that release. Uh, he can feel the muscles around the venom gland start to, um, start to con uh, contract. And that's when he's going to start applying a bit of pressure. He's going to just fall through the motion um, that the snakes do. This last mamba, I'm going to leave at normal speed. But I thought I'd let you hear what's going on inside the room. Instead of listening to what's on the other side of the window for a minute. That's less nuts than it used to go. I think he is too, yeah. This is. Yeah, if he would just turn slightly and do that instead, it'd be fine. I'll take a minute to point out they were discussing this mamba. They said he was less nuts this time. This male has a reputation for being very flighty especially when he's removed to clean his enclosure. When he was in quarantine, he was especially active anytime he needed to be removed. So when he cleared quarantine and he entered this room with our other lapids, he was intentionally placed in an enclosure with a divider. You can see that these have uh, little flags sticking out in the middle of each one, and Kristen will move them before Jim puts the snake back each time. Those are dividers. The enclosure itself can be separated into halves, which makes it much easier to clean. You can shift him into one half, shut it, clean the other side, open it back up, and you never have to take him out, which is also less stressful for him, too. So everybody wins. I also feel I must point out that the weird taped off tile next to the setup is a tile that is taped in place. The adhesive had come slightly loose and we didn't want to take the risk of the tile sliding while he's extracting. So we taped it down for now.
For the last clip of this video, I'll let you all listen to what happens when a snake behaves unexpectedly and how we have to coordinate with each other when that happens. Okay. Oh, nice. Oh, no, 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 no. And there you have it. We're prepared for things to happen unexpectedly. We communicate clearly with each other and we stay calm. And that completes the Black Mamba extraction. Thank you all for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe our videos and we'll see you next time.